All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We're sitting over here in the Freedom Office. And man, I tell you what, I'm so relaxed now because I went for an entire week without doing a damn thing other than sitting by a swimming pool, relaxing, watching my kids scream and holler at each other, my wife nagging. Yeah, never mind. It was a good vacation <laughs> otherwise. You know what I'm saying. Well, anyway, we're back. It's uh, Tuesday. And I'm sitting there streaming through some uh, articles. And uh, I tell you what, man, I found one. It just I think you would find very interesting. This is some major dirt, okay? Uh, this comes from the Washington Examiner, Zachary Faria. This was yesterday at 4 p.m. Philadelphia mayor thinks gunshot victims should be locked up for defending himself. Now, let me preface this whole thing. I'm not, I have not vetted this. A lot of times people jump on these articles and they want to jump out there. And, uh, uh, but I have not had an opportunity to seriously look into it and figure out if this is for real. Because uh, honestly, this is so idiotic. It, it almost seems fake. It, it, it really does. So anyway, uh, I'm going to read this thing and we're going to comment on it throughout the deal. So it's interesting. Mayor thinks gunshot victims should be locked up for defending himself. Well, that's the way they feel. I mean, that's the way uh, Justin Trudeau just said this last week. You don't have that right to defend yourself with a firearm. Against deadly force, you don't have the right to defend yourself by whatever means necessary. That's what I can't stand about the government today. This jackass up in Washington right now feels like uh, your right to self-defense or your Second Amendment to defend your property, your house, and your, your and all your pro everything. <laughs> You don't, you don't have that right. And they, they believe that because you look at New York, you look at Maryland, you look at Delaware, uh, you look maybe not so much Delaware, but a couple other ones. Uh, you've got Chicago. You've got California. Uh, these places, they don't think you have the ability to own a firearm. But you know what they do? They'll let these assholes out of jail the minute they get in. <laughs> they're, they're put in there, and they're back out on the street, and they got another firearm. So they're going after law-abiding citizens like you and me. All right, in case you need a reminder of the Democratic Party's priorities when it comes to gun control, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney is happy to offer one. Now, you people from Philadelphia, uh, there's a couple of you out there, I know. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below because this guy right here has got to be worse than the other dude that was the last time around. My office, my main office, is on 1700 Market Street. Earlier this month, an argument between three men turned into a shootout. Gregory Jackson was shot and killed by Micah Towns after Jackson had opened fire. The third man, Rashan Vayrain, or however you want to pronounce that, was arrested as officers believe he picked up Jackson's gun after he had been killed and handed it to another man who fled the scene. A fourth man, Kuron Garner, uh, was arrested after firing into a crowd near the fight. Now, maybe this, maybe this guy... The mayor thought that anyone who was shooting into the group of people should be arrested, but I'm pretty sure he didn't. Uh, however, Towns was not arrested. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner, who was actually, I think, getting ready to go through a recall, determined that Towns had acted in self-defense after he had been shot by Jackson. Towns was legally allowed to carry a firearm. Uh, Jackson had a gun permit as well, though only because of a clerical error. Uh, according to Philadelphia law enforcement officials, Towns was in a verbal argument, was shot by the man he was arguing with, then shot and killed his assailant. Okay, determine how, how the argument went. I'm not here to tell you how that went. There's a lot of different ways that an argument can turn into a gunfight. This should result in jail time for Towns because anybody who fired a gun that day should be locked up, according to Kenny. Towns was only defending himself after being shot, but according to Kenny, he committed the crime of not walking away from an argument. Hot chick walking across my house. So anyway, that, that could be the case. I mean, if you are not backing away, actually, let's do what we possibly can to go ahead and de-escalate anything before it turns into a gunfight, okay? But if somebody pulls a gun out while you're having a heated discussion, you're within your right to go ahead. You did not initiate that. You did not walk after them. You didn't go after them. Then you're the assailant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there should be, be some price, some inconvenience for that person who could have walked away, could have continued walking away, but came back and reignited the situation, Kenny said. So here's the thing, like not too long ago, and I think it has actually changed. I'm going to situate myself. Uh, the, the, Virginia. You had a duty to retreat. This is where, you know, you have to last resort. You can let them t destroy and take anything from your home, but you got to be in a closet upstairs, and they actually have to be on top of you before you can actually 
legally defend yourself, which is absolutely bullshit. Now, in the state of North Carolina, we have the Castle Doctrine, which means you cross my threshold, you're mine. You reach into my vehicle, your ass is mine. You try to hit me while I'm in my boat or my motorcycle, your ass is mine. Whew. Okay, Krasner's office apparently said, we cannot invent crimes that don't exist and the facts that aren't true. But Kenny's impulse to punish the legal gun owner who acted in self-defense after being shot reflects the Democratic Party's broader issue on gun control. Boys, I can tell you what, I'm back at it, man, and we are going to be hot and heavy. <laughs> Talk about the 10 Republican senators who are in agreement with some of the stuff that the Democrats are proposing that could be dangerous for us all. The Democratic politicians target law-abiding gun owners with their gun control proposals and rhetoric. And you know what? The interesting thing is you have to listen to it because the people who listen to Joe Biden have to be the most ignorant group of people in the entire free world. I actually had a friend of mine who actually told me the other day that the economy is doing great. I don't know where in the world he heard that, but oh well. Might be listening to too much MSNBC talking about what the great achievements this president has. But I will tell you this. He is a liar. He's a cheat. He's made his way through in the entire 53 years in office, lying and cheating the American public like you and me. And there are still people who are stupid enough to listen to this cat. Uh, <laughs> when Democrats demand universal background checks, and this is, again, this is a great article. I'm going to put the link down below by Zachary Farrar. It's like Brett Farrar. Uh, <laughs> when Democrats demand universal background checks, they ignore that over 90% of the gun sales involve a background check and that only 8% of criminals who use a firearm in a crime acquire it from a friend or a family member. When Democrats demand arbitrary assault weapons bans, law-abiding gun owners comply while criminals simply alter their rifles in violation of the law. <sighs> what are they going to understand? And this is always a thing. Um, we know we can make an effect if we can pull the guns out of everyone's hands because, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the way the Democrats think is that you are a potential criminal as long as you own a firearm. They look at you as a threat. It's absolutely disgusting. The mayor of the country's sixth largest city holds to those same Democratic talking points while also supporting soft on crime policies that would help police identify the criminals in possession of illegal firearms. Yeah, they want to take the firearms out of your hands. Not the criminals. They're scared to go after these guys because they're defund the police. They are anti-police politicians. And they're going to hold the policemen to the, the fire to their feet anytime and every time something happens. With Philadelphia coming off a record year in homicides, Kenny wants to treat self-defense as a criminal act. That's kind of disgusting to me if you think. Punishing people for defending themselves will only leave the safety of law-abiding citizens in the hands of criminals who set out to hurt them. Yet this is precisely what Kenny is advocating. Yeah, way to go there, Kenny. Go ahead and destroy our rights. You know what? They tried to take our First Amendment right from us. And why do we have the Second Amendment? Because the First Amendment is first. Because those who take our First Amendment, we need a Second Amendment. <laughs> Does that make sense? Probably. I don't know. Anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Pretty crazy. Way to go, Philadelphia. You will sink, just like the other democratically run cities. Oh, uh, unreal. It's Coda Boy 32. Oh, I haven't said that in a while. KB32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women, in uniform 24 7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. Don't ever give up your right for self-defense. And sure as shit, if you're going to self-defend yourself, uh, <laughs> make sure it's worth it. Because there's people out there like that that want to make you a criminal. And when you're not. Y'all be good. I'm out of here. Boom.